All I got to say is, rest in peace, Trayvon Martin. It was a sad situation that shouldn't have had happen. And they allowed the wrong people to roam around with pistols. You ask yourself, America, does racism still exist? And the answer is, yes, it does. Especially here in New York City where I live at, racism is at its, at its most high right now. It's at its peak right now. Like, where I live at in Staten Island, New York, like when you walk on the sidewalk, the white people will literally walk in the street just to get away from you. Yes, it's that serious out here. It's bad. It's really, really bad out here. The race, the racism, really, really terrible out here. I want to know when is this going to end. I know, and I know y'all know that it's not going to end. But in my heart, one day it will. Us as black people need to get together and. And do right, you know, and save one another. And stop killing each other in the neighborhood. Because all it is doing is giving the white people something to laugh at. This is a joke to them. To see your faces on the news every day is a joke to them. They laugh at stuff like that. We're giving them the amusement. We don't need to be giving them no amusement. Not at all. But what happened to that Trayvon is devastating. I just now found out about this. I mean, I was clueless about this until today. Today is the 23rd of March. 2012, to be exact. I want to tell you a little story that I have. One day, I was on the... 46 bus no the 61 and it's huh you said the 52 bus. 52 now matter of fact I'm sorry it wasn't even the 52 bus it was the 60 the 61 bus because I was going to Cove Road and I was walking down the aisle as I was walking down the aisle of the bus I said my excuse me to the people that was you know, in my way, and they kindly moved to the side and let me walk to the back. What's very generous of, of these people. Okay, now when I get to the back of the bus, I notice that it's all this space, and it's one person, it's, and it's a Chinese lady, and she was sitting on, on the right of me. I sat down, I proceeded to put my, my headphones on to listen to my iPod, and then it's Chinese lady say, excuse me, and she got up, and she walked away. So I'm thinking that she's going to walk to get off the bus because, you know, the bus is about to approach a stop. That wasn't the case. The lady got up, and she moved to the side of the bus to sit down, which I found to be very, very prejudiced because she didn't want to sit there, no black folks. And the smile that she had on her face was like, like she wanted to say, go F yourself, nigga. I don't want to sit next to you type of smile. And I felt kind of violated, but I didn't catch on to it until I got off the bus. Exactly. And I'm asking this question, like, when is this going to stop, America? Like, I know it's not going to stop, but... Can we make make some changes in the way we live our lives? Do we have to run away from each other every time we see one another? Because we in a country that's nothing but interracial. You know, when you walk down the street, you see a Chinese man here, a Mexican here, Japanese here. I mean, 
it's a multi a multi culture country right about now. It's not how it used to be that it was two type of race that was here, which was the blacks and the whites. It's multiracial now. And the white people told the the the, the people that comes over here don't trust black people. They flat out told them that. So every time we go in different neighborhoods, we don't get served fast enough when we go to stores or they don't want to serve us at all because of what the white man is telling them and which is very wrong. I had took my girlfriend out for, an, for a day out, you know. No, no, no. Matter of fact, it wasn't me that took out. I apologize. It was her friend that, that invited us out. And she took us to to Fridays. And we sat down and we went to eat our meal. And we got our meal. We proceeded to eat our meal. And it was, I don't want to say it in a harsh way, but it was some white folks that was sitting at a diagonal angle from us. And I overheard the lady tell the waitress, I don't want to sit next to those people. And in my mind, I'm like, what those people? Who are those people she's talking about? And her daughter said to her, to the mother, um, why you don't want to sit here? And she was like, I just, I just don't want to sit here. I want to move. And it didn't dawn to me that she was talking about us. As us black folks sitting right there behind her, she didn't like that. And plus, it was another black group that was sitting right across from us. So I guess she felt threatened that it was two groups of black people sitting there and she didn't want her family near us. And that was so, so racist. So racist. At a at its most high. But this is the thing I really want to say before I end this story. Is I hope and I pray that some kind of justice come to what happened to Trayvon. It, some kind of justice. Give this man 10 years, 15 years. Get him some time in jail. Because it's not right for this man to roam free out here. After killing someone, whether if he black or white, it it doesn't matter what race you are. I don't think you need to be walking the street. I'm sorry, no. I mean, if it was a black guy go out there kill like four white kids, you know they will hang him from the tree. But this is this is not a race issue. This is more of we need to get criminals off the street type of issue. And this man should not be walking the street at all. If a man can sit there and get life for raping someone, and he didn't have no pistol when he raped that person, why shouldn't he, why should he walk the street? My point exactly to those that's listening to this. Rest in peace, Trevon, and I wish much closure in this case. Thank y'all for listening. Good day. Good night.